Hi everybody, my name is Lyndon, and this is going to be the last video of this series on text reveals. And it's slightly different this time because we're not necessarily revealing the text, but it is something that's going to be using an effect to disrupt the alpha using the shatter effect. And the shatter effect is pretty interesting, but it does have its limitations. Um, and this is also going to be a little bit longer than the previous tutorials. So try to bear with me and there's some new concepts to go over with lights and 3D layers and things like that. So let's go ahead and make a new comp. We'll just say 150 frames and click OK. I have a background texture here, some concrete. I'm going to like to use that. Click the S key and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. And this next part, we're going to re require two different cameras. So we're just going to do new camera and I'm going to call this main. I'm going to turn off depth of field. I don't need it and click OK. And then it's going to give you an error saying there's nothing that's actually 3D yet. That's fine. And then you can just duplicate that camera and call the second camera this reference. So one of these cameras is going to be what renders and it's going to be our main camera. And the second one is going to be the reference camera. Now I would like to make the distinction here between these two and the order that they're in does matter. So by default, After Effects will only render the camera that's visible and on top. So put your reference camera underneath so you don't accidentally mess that up. Second part here, we're going to switch this to two views. Right now it's a top view and the active camera, which is going to be our reference camera. So now middle mouse click over here, change the top view to be the main camera and then middle mouse click on the right and then change that to be the reference camera and then grab the cement layer go to the 3d switch click oh click on the switch for the 3d then go up here to your camera tool make sure it's the camera shape if not just set it to the unified camera tool okay so click over on our reference camera and you can see it says reference over there and we're just going to start rotating around now with our camera so the controls are the left mouse button is how you rotate right mouse button clicking and dragging that is how you zoom in and out and then to pan it's the middle mouse button okay so this reference camera basically allows us to be able to see positions in 3d space more easily but we're only ever going to be rendering or really caring about the main camera so the next step is we need to create a new light so to do this we're just going to grab a spotlight set the intensity just to 100. Uh, we do need to make sure cast shadows is on and then just click OK. Click the V key, and then you can pull the light back behind the camera. So this little thing here is where the main camera is, and we do need it to be there. And then if you click the light and then click the A key twice, you can bring up the light options. So if you double click the light, you can't animate these settings. They're just one time use. But if you click the A key twice or open up the full menu, you can animate these. So here we're going to grab the cone angle and we're going to lower the cone angle. So we're going to create kind of like a vignette around the corners there. I'm going to fit this in frame, do something like this and just lower this camera. That's more centered. And then on that light, we're going to increase the feathering and pull out the uh, cone angle just a little bit more. Don't want too much feathering. Okay. Something like that will be good. Okay. So now we need our text type in shards and make that a little bit larger. I'm going to center that. But you can see with the reference camera that this is just projected on the screen. It's not actually in 3D. But as soon as we click the little 3D switch, now it's going to be in 3D. And that's what we want. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to just animate this starting behind the camera. Pull this behind the camera or out of the field of view of the camera. Click the P key. And we're going to animate the position. So we're going to animate it from starting from frame zero. And then we'll go, let's say, we'll say like 60 frames, two seconds, and then it will land back perfectly on the ground. So go to the graph editor. We need to separate the dimensions. We're not interested in the X and Y position. That shouldn't change. This is the Z position. Grab this one. And things that are falling go faster and faster and faster. So here we're actually going to have this linear at the beginning. And then we'll just pull this busy handle down and I'll get faster and faster and faster until it hits the ground. We'll just, uh, we can actually ease that. Something kind of like this. And you'll notice that it's only playing the reference. You actually have to click over to the main camera and get it to play there. You can also click this button here in the viewport. 
Okay, so the idea of this is the shard just comes down and then it's going to hit the ground. This is a little bit too abrupt, so I'm going to just ease that a little bit more. Hold that down. Okay, so when it hits the ground, I want it to shatter. But a few more things that we need to do, and one of them is shadows. So anytime you're using a 3D layer, you now have material attributes. So if you double click the A key, you can access them. And by default, cast shadows is off. So you need to enable cast shadows. And then you need to make sure that the cement object or your background element can also receive shadows. So that is on by default. But then you also need to make sure that your light can cast shadows. Also, if your shadow diffusion is too high, you might not see a shadow. Lower that down to zero, and now you can see, oh, there is indeed a shadow there. Now, it's really, really hard. We don't want it to be that hard. And it's also kind of in the wrong position. So I'm going to zoom over here on the reference camera, like the V key, and just kind of recenter that, like it a little bit more in the center there. OK, something more like that. Then I can double click the spotlight and increase the diffusion. So this is going to be how blurry the shadow is. We want it fairly blurry, maybe around 50 pixels or so. And then we can always increase that later. OK, so the next thing, I'm going to collapse these layers, select all of them, and just close them. OK, so with this layer, the shards layer, we need to uh, attach the shatter effect on a copy of this. So we're going to have this layer hit the ground, and then we're going to replace it with the layer that shatters. And the reason we have to do that is because the shatter effect doesn't have the option to start it at a specific frame. It always starts on frame zero. So we're going to have to use a workaround. OK, so now we need to duplicate shards. We're going to Control D. I'm going to call this copy shards shattered. Now we need to delete the keyframe at the beginning. So click the U. And then this keyframe here we don't need. But we can just click the stopwatch, and that's going to erase the keyframes. So it's still going to be at 0. But if we go forward, the other copy flies behind the camera. But this one stays where it is. Temporarily, I'm just going to turn the other one off. So we can only work with shards, the one that's going to shatter. If I grab the shatter effect and put it on there, Right away, we get a wireframe interpretation of what that's going to look like, but that's not useful. We need to change that to rendered. And if we go right to the very beginning, you can see that if I just click page down, it's shattering right at the very beginning. And there's no way to stop that. So what we have to do is pre-compose this. So we're going to do Control shift c or right-click pre-compose. And then we can just get rid of that comp name at the end and click OK. So the shattered effect actually goes inside this pre-comp if we double click. So we can see that it's still starting at the beginning. But if we go back to the comp, we can move, we can change the position at which the composition starts. So now all we have to do, click the U key to display the keyframes on the shards text, and then just position that right over where the other text lands. So as soon as the other text lands, then it will shatter. Now this comp that we made is no is not in 3D, so we do have to click the 3D button and then it will line up perfectly. This, this one's going to hit the ground and then this one is going to shatter immediately. Okay? So let's toggle the keyframes here on the original shards object that's falling, click the T key, and on the frame before it hits, that's going to be the last frame that is visible. So on for me frame 59, click the stopwatch for opacity, step forward one frame and then set it to 0. And then we're going to click T on the, the composition for the shattered text object. And then on frame 60, that's going to be on. Step backwards one frame, set that to 0. So now if we toggle between these, we get a perfect shatter. Okay. So now we need to control the shatter, because right now it looks like brick, but that does not it's not really the aesthetics I'm going for. So if we go into the shape, the pattern, and then change that to glass, this is going to be a little bit more interesting. OK, so with glass is going to give us a little bit more of an interesting look, because I want it to look kind of shattered. And you get this little target. And this target allows you to position where the center of the crack starts, where the, the shatter starts. So position this in such a way that you can still read the text, because the shatter is supposed to just be like a stylized text in this case. You, you should still be able to read it, since it's supposed to be a logo or something like that. And then the next problem is, though, 
it looks fine on the first frame and then the second frame it gets a little bit too much and then from there it just continues to go forever it just explodes so we need to slow that down so in the physics tab here we're going to turn off gravity to set that to zero and then we're also going to have to play around with the strength maybe a strength of one is going to be a little bit more appropriate for us let's play that and you can see this is going to be a lot slower but still it's, it's going to keep on going and going and going so the way we can control how far those pieces go is with this viscosity control. So right away, the viscosity of 0.1 is going to allow these pieces to, to fly off quite quickly. So maybe just go in a couple of frames, set the viscosity at 0.1, and then maybe one frame later, set that to be a viscosity of around 0.8. That's really going to slow down how far those pieces can move. Maybe just pull both of these keyframes back one. Otherwise, it's going to get out of control really fast. And then we can set the viscosity down to about 0.3 or so. So it's going to shatter and then slow and slow and slow down. You can pull this over. Maybe a viscosity of around 0.9 would be a little bit better. All of these settings here are going to depend on the size of your text and how, how large the text is like the font size and the scale and how close your camera is and all sorts of things like comp size and things like that. So you're going to have to play around with it, but something kind of like this is going to produce a reasonable result. If you want a little bit more motion though, then take the viscosity, maybe lower it back down to 0.1 and then pull it closer. So those pieces can continue to fly out for a little bit longer and then slow down. Maybe, Maybe by the end here at frame 30, then the viscosity goes higher, maybe at 0.5 again. So we don't want the pieces to stop suddenly, but we do want them to slow down. So something like that's pretty reasonable. You can play around with that for a long time, but here I have two frames. Viscosity is animated then at 0.1. Go forward one frame, goes all the way up to 0.9. Then go to around frame 14, back down to 0.1. And then over the next 15 frames or so, it creeps back up to 0.5. Something like that's just going to allow a little bit more motion and allow it to slow down. You could also do some ease ins, ease outs with these, but for now I'm not going to bother. So go back to the comp, and now we can see how this, this transition works. So we can see the charge hitting the ground and then it shatters. So something like that is the, the, the main idea behind this effect, but there's now one little problem, and the problem is that there's no shadows. So unfortunately, you can't use the shards effect as with a 3D layer and expect the shadows to work. The shadows aren't going to pick up on the effect. So in order to get a shadow, there's a few ways we can do it, but probably the easiest is with the drop shadow effect. So all we have to do, type in drop, and then it's going to be perspective drop shadow. And then if you increase the distance just a little bit, and then increase the softness, we can get more of a, a soft shadow. If you just want to look at the shadow, you can do shadow only, do something kind of like this. And you can also change the opacity and light directions. We're going to make that a little bit darker, turn that back on. And now we've got the text in a pretty reasonable location. Okay, so we're nearly done here. What we need to do though is take the shards layer, click on the motion blur switch and enable motion blur for the comp. And since shards here is moving, but we're not getting any motion blur at all, it would be nice to be able to get a little bit of blur from where, from that movement. So we're gonna use that with the CC force motion blur effect. And then we're gonna set the motion blur samples to 24. And then the last thing here, we're gonna recenter our main camera so we can get shards, you know, more center of frame, something kind of like that. And you can see there's also a little bit too much vignetting on the right side. So what we're gonna to need to do here, I'm gonna zoom in very slightly, take the spotlight, grab the selection tool, and we're just gonna to try to recenter that. You could also do the same type of thing with an actual vignette effect. You probably get better results with it, but it's just an interesting way to do the same type of type of thing. I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer, and then I'm gonna grab a curves control. I'm gonna lower the brightness down. More like that. And then I'm gonna make this a little bit more blue. A 
I'm going to pull out some of the red. Kind of like that. So let's pull this forward, see what happens here. Another thing is the spotlight is, it should be behind the camera. I'm going to pull this back so the text is always illuminated. If you wanted it to be in shadow at the beginning, I mean, you could totally do that, but it is a little bit jarring with how dark it is. So if we pull this back even further, it should always be visible. At the very back here, we can click the P key for the position. Let's pull this a little bit further behind the camera, something like that. Okay, so another thing that we can do really fast is enable depth of field. So this text is going to be out of focus at the beginning. And to do that with our main camera, just double click and just click enable depth of field. And the f-stop, you can do unrealistic numbers for the f-stop just to force blur. But um, like an f-stop of 0.5 would be like ridiculous in an actual camera, but maybe 0.25 here. But we do want a lot of out of focus, like bokeh. And at the very end here where it lands, it should be in focus. So that's in focus, but at the beginning, it's not going to be in focus. It's just going to fly past the camera. It's going to be pretty blurry, but that's going to reduce any aliasing that we might see around the letters and if especially if you had a texture in the shards text and that texture was really close to the camera it could be quite blurry so by using some depth of field we can make that a little bit more interesting so just a couple more adjustments here i'm going to just darken this down just a little bit more shards is getting a little bit bright as well with that light so on the shards layer on this and grab a curves Go forward a little bit, and I'm just going to reduce the overall brightness down. Then I'm going to copy that curves and paste it on the shadow effect as well. I want this to be before the drop shadow though, otherwise it's going to make the shadow darker. Maybe just pull that up a little bit on both of these. And then I'm going to go back to my adjustment layer here and I'm going to add in a vignette since the vignette I'm trying to do with the spotlight isn't working as well as I wanted it to. Let's grab that, pull that down. It's going to darken the edges just a little bit more. Okay, so that wraps up this one. Hope you learned something about the shadow effect. If you did, I hope to do some more After Effects tutorials and I have a pretty interesting one to do 3D text with Element 3D, but uh, shattered 3D text. And that's probably going to be a really long winded tutorial because it has lots of software you need to use and lots of steps. Um, but if you have any other ideas for tutorials or anything else you'd like to see, send a message to me and I'll see what I can do because I'm always you know, looking for new ideas for doing tutorials. So thank you very much for watching and have a good day.